Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to answer a question I get pretty frequently from my from my viewers which is what's eating my roses and because that question can mean a lot of different things I'm going to try to address a wide range of uh, the pests and damage that you can see particularly keying in on my local climate a northern temperate climate and the kinds of pests that I'll see here that may be kind of similar or very different in your own local climate so let's just start with the broadest scale of damage which is if you came and found the whole top edge of all of your roses were just chewed right off all the flower buds and everything else well if you're if you're in a climate like mine uh, and if you've seen deer around at all deer are probably your problem now uh, if you saw the similar damage but you saw it down low you saw that there was devastating chewing damage uh, and that your roses were chewed to nubs especially early in spring when they're starting to send up fresh new shoots uh, chances are in that case that it's rabbits instead and so those are the two biggest uh, herbivore damage that I can think of that you would see on roses fairly commonly. But let's get down to the more nuanced damage and I'm going to talk about leaf damage next. Now there's a diagnostic here that I would know in my climate and there's really only three pests that I see pretty commonly. One of which is of little concern and very easy to diagnose. It's a leaf cutting bee and what you'll see in this case is you'll see that the leaves have these very neat, very tidy, rounded notches from the outside of the leaf. Very distinctive, you're not going to mistake it for any other kind of damage and it's just a flying insect, a bee that uh, chews up those leaves and goes away. Uh, it doesn't tend in my area to cause too much lasting damage, it's sort of scattered all over the garden and uh, there's a little you can do to prevent it. There's not anything you can really do to stop those bees from coming around and taking notches out of your leaves. So uh, I'm hoping in this case that it just sets your mind at ease, that it's nothing serious and you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. Now let's look at the damage and the signs of one of the ones that causes me a bit of grief which is the rose slug sawfly. Let's look at the signs of the damage and see what we can figure out about what's causing it. So first of all, look at this section here. Big chunks taken out from the end of this leaf, but in other places, the biting damage not going all the way through. And in fact, when I pull off this leaf here, which you can see is pretty badly damaged, but if you look at the next one down, I'm gonna zoom in a little more, you can see the damage on this one has just kind of a, a scraping or chewing from underneath that didn't get all the way through uh, for the most part. You can see it got a little bit more through down here. So um, if I'm telling the story, I think that there was a pest that was smaller at this stage and it was only able to bite partway through the leaf and that as it got larger and progressed up to the uh, tip and juicier parts of the plant, it was able to get all the way through the leaf. And then as a final sign here, I'm going to look at the next layer of foliage down and see if I can zoom in on that and focus. Because what you're going to see here, right down here, is these little speckles, these little dots of black. That is frass. And there's another sign of it there on this leaf. And that frass means that something was chewing and then pooping. Let's see if we can catch one of our bad guys in the act here. We have that skeletonization on the front side of the leaf here. It looks like it's been chewed, but maybe not all the way through. And I hope you can see on the back side of the leaf here who the culprit is there. It's a guy called a rose slug sawfly. This one, I'm gonna start down low. Now you see that frass again, moving upwards. You can see some of the damage and I think even additional frass down there. And let's see if we can catch this guy in the act. Oh. Let's see. Oh, there we are. And that is the much larger larvae now, moved further up towards the juicy tip of the plant and is now chewing a big hole in the leaf. Okay, so now that you know what you're looking for in a sawfly, in the rose slug sawfly larvae, uh, 
the question becomes, how do you control it? What do you do about it? And it can actually cause a fair amount of damage if they move in in any large numbers. I have to say that if you balance the kinds of plantings around your garden, this is a note that I've hit before, if you have lots of different kinds of plants and you mix all, them all around, you'll end up with kind of a balanced population of predators. And the predators do eat the sawfly larvae. So it does tend to keep them under control. I very rarely see a large scale outbreak on my roses here, even though I grow roses in fairly large numbers and it's because I do companion planting with things from the daisy family, things from the mustard family, all sorts of flowering ornament, ornamentals from different families uh, of plants. It tends to bring up those beneficial insect populations. Now if you do have to knock them down, here's the interesting thing to know about sawfly is that it's not a fly uh, and it's not a caterpillar. Uh, so none of the BT solutions will help you with this. It is actually a bee or a wasp or in that same group as bees or wasps. So the kind of thing that you have to do, they're, they're fairly easy to, I showed you how to find them on your plant. So once you've found the area that they're in, they're fairly easy to wipe out with something like just basic insecticidal soap does a good job on them. And I don't use anything harder than that because as I say, all of my beneficial insects are doing a good job of keeping the pest population down, both for them and for aphids and for everything else. So I really don't want to spray anything that's going to knock down my beneficial insects. So so I, I just use a targeted spray of insecticidal soap and it seems to get rid of the sawfly larvae. Or, you know, if you want to be really low tech about it, uh, if you find them, grab them, squish them or remove those leaves, no big deal. Let's look at a third kind of damage here and I'm going to deal with this one through kind of the process of elimination. It is not rounded notching at the edges of the leaves, so I don't think it's the leaf cutter bee. It appears to have uh, just a single zone of damage. It doesn't have any of that telltale frass on the leaves below it. It doesn't have any of that um, that sort of scraping damage or sort of uh, previous skeletonization damage of the leaf uh, around it. And it doesn't progress, they get worse towards the top of the plant. In fact, there's no damage further up. It's rather down low. Just by process of elimination and knowing my pests locally, I suspect that this is just snail damage. So we've covered wide scale damage, either to the top of your plants or to the bottom of it, the, the, the big herbivore damage. We've covered three different kinds of pests that you'll find chewing up the leaves of your roses. But what if it is an insect pest that is eating the flowers of your roses? And the most common one there is called budworm. Now, budworm is not a worm, budworm is a caterpillar, but it, uh, and it's not very common in my area. I haven't seen it here. Um, I haven't seen it on any of my roses ever, uh, but I do get sent pictures of this pretty frequently by people who have seen, uh, you know, severe insect damage on the buds of their roses. And budworm, I'm going to insert some pictures here from Google, uh, but as it being a caterpillar and it can, you know, again, decimate the the buds of your roses, the flowers, and just destroy them. Uh, if you want to try to handle those ones, happily for pests in that family, in the caterpillar family, you can use a, a natural remedy called BTK. Now when you say about BT, which is sort of a biological control of insect pests, you have to choose the right suffix letter. Uh, BTK is for caterpillars, BTI is for flies, and I think it's BTG that's for beetles. Uh, those last letters just basically mean that it's a strain that is selected to really only attack insects of that particular kind. So as, again with the caterpillars, use uh, BTK and that should be a pretty good way of protecting your roses if you're finding that there's a problem with, uh, with uh, budworm damage. All right, that's all I've got to say about what's eating your roses. Obviously, I've skipped a whole bunch of pests here, things like thrips and spider mites that more or less just cause stippling or damage to the foliage, but you don't see the chew marks. That's what I'm, I'm trying to cover in this video. Um, if you have any questions about the topic, please leave those down below in the comments of the video. And certainly, if you have any other uh, favorite rose pests that you'd like to, uh, to bring to light to everybody, sure love to hear it, especially when it comes to the large herbivores. I'm always interested to hear uh, what those are by location. All right, thanks so much for watching.